Okay, I'm going to show you a short little three-minute animation to get you started thinking about filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. And then we will go through each one. Filtration, which is mm, a little complicated but not too bad. Reabsorption is the complicated one. And then secretion we do in a relatively simplistic manner. So let me show you a little animation to get you started. The primary functions of the kidneys are to filter blood and form urine. In doing so, the kidneys regulate fluid balance, electrolyte concentration, and pH by excreting unwanted fluid and substances as urine. Urine is formed in the nephron. Three processes are involved in urine formation. Glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, and tubular secretion. Glomerular filtration occurs as blood circulates through the glomerulus. Fluid, small molecules, and ions in the blood within glomerular capillaries move across the filtration membrane into the capsular space to form filtrate. Once filtrate enters the renal tubule, it is called tubular fluid. Substances are simultaneously removed from and added to the tubular fluid as it flows through the renal tubule. In tubular reabsorption, useful substances are removed from the tubular fluid and returned to the blood. Solutes move across the tubule wall into the interstitial fluid by processes such as diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, co-transport, and osmosis. The solutes readily enter the surrounding capillaries to return to the general circulation. Water follows the solutes by osmosis. 65% of the water is reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule. An additional 15% from the descending portion of the nephron loop. And an additional 19% from the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts. Thus, 99% of the glomerular filtrate ultimately returns to the bloodstream. The 1% or less that is not reabsorbed will be excreted as urine. In tubular secretion, substances move from the capillary blood to the tubular fluid. Waste materials, such as metabolic byproducts, excess ions, and drugs, diffuse out of the blood to the interstitial fluid and are then transported across the tubular wall and secreted into the tubular fluid for excretion. Tubular fluid that enters collecting ducts is called urine. Depending on the need to eliminate or conserve water, collecting ducts reabsorb water to produce dilute or concentrated urine. For example, when water intake is high, the kidneys produce a large volume of dilute urine. Conversely, when water intake is limited, producing a large volume of dilute urine would lead to dehydration. In this case, the kidneys conserve water by producing a small volume of concentrated urine. The kidney's ability to concentrate urine depends primarily on two key factors. One, maintaining a high concentration of the solutes sodium chloride and urea in the renal medulla, which is accomplished by the countercurrent functions of the nephron loops. And two, the presence of antidiuretic hormone, ADH, which makes collecting ducts more permeable to water. Okay, so that's a little intro. I realize it's a little overwhelming to look at it all at once, so we'll separate it into filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. Um, this figure is showing you a simplified but better drawn version than mine of um, the processes. Um, I want you to keep in mind, and I may actually color code this for you, um, which tubes contain blood and which tubes contain filtrate slash urine. He also called it tubular fluid, and that's fine. I just not use very often. Um, so what I want to talk about first is filtration, where it occurs, why it occurs. So the place that filtration occurs is the first place in the nephron that you have blood tubes next to P-tubes. So we've got the arcuate artery and then the afferent arterial. And then the first time we get the blood tube next to the P-tube is at the place that we call the renal corpuscle, which is a ball of capillaries. Imagine that my hand is the ball of capillaries called the glomerulus with um, a capsule around it. It's a two-layered capsule. We're going to look at it in just a second. Um, so this is the first place that they come in contact with one another because the blood came from here to here. So let's blow up 
that renal corpuscle and look at it and figure out why it's so very, very good at filtration. So first off, let's look at the anatomy of this renal corpuscle and also define what a renal corpuscle is. A renal corpuscle is um, the blood tube, the glomerulus, plus the P-tube, which is the capsule. In anatomy, they still, they call it the glomerular capsule. In phys, they haven't moved away from eponyms yet. So it's called Bowman's capsule. It's the same capsule. So um, the glomerulus is the blood tube and the capsule is the P-tube. But um, what it looks like <clears throat> is um, the glomerulus is a, a capillary ball. But if you look at this, this doesn't look like simple squamous epithelium which is what capillaries are made of. And the reason it doesn't is because this thing has a glove on it because the way the capsule is formed is take um, a softly blown up balloon, okay, and then push the glomerulus into the softly blown up balloon. And then what you're gonna end up with is a, a balloon glove, right? In which it's coated with balloon and then um, continuous with another layer of balloon with space between it. So this layer that you're actually seeing around the outside of the glomerulus is really the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. And then the parietal layer is connected to it. And then between those two is what we call the capsular space. So why do you care? The reason that you care is that when I push anything out of the capillary, it's actually going to get caught in the capsular space. So let's look at the structure a little more closely. If you blow this up and look at it, you can see that the capillary itself that makes up the glomerulus is fenestrated, meaning it's got lots of holes in it. And then the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule also has these little slits between the cells. The cells are weird looking, they're called podocyte cells. Um, so um, it's really, really porous. Okay, so now let's talk about why it's so good at filtration other than being really porous. What's going to happen is the blood is going to come in the afferent arterial, go to the glomerulus, and then out the efferent arterial. But please note that the diameter of the afferent arterial and the efferent arterial is different. The afferent arterial is larger in diameter than the efferent arterial, okay? And um, that makes the pressure in here higher because big tube going in, small tube going out, higher pressure here. In addition, remember that the renal artery is right off of the abdominal descending aorta, so that makes it high pressure too. So we've got high pressure, we've got porous, and um, in addition, there are a million of these per kidney. So that makes a recipe for very, very effective filtration. High pressure, really porous, and um, lots and lots of surface area. So what happens here is that the blood pressure forces water and small solutes out here to here um, into the capsular space by filtration. And now I have a fluid that's called filtrate. It's got lots of water and lots of mostly water soluble solutes in there. It should contain everything that can fit through these holes and nothing that should not fit through the holes. So on a good day, you should not end up with whole proteins, big proteins in the filtrate and definitely not whole cells in the filtrate. Now it can happen, but that's not a good day for your kidneys. So the site that filtration occurs, if you blow this up a little further, is called the filtration membrane. So the filtration membrane is simply a layer of simple squamous epithelium, which is called endothelium when it's forming a blood vessel. Um, and then the blood would be in here. And then a layer of um, the podocyte epithelium that um, forms the visceral layer of um, Bowman's capsule. And then, so that's just two layers of like simple epithelium and then no tissue between them, just a fused basement membrane. And so this is very, very thin and very, very good at filtration. So how much is filtered? Well, the glomerular filtration rate, the collective amount that is filtered out of all of the glomeruli um, every minute is called GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. And it's usually about 125 milliliters per minute, which I realize I'm mixing units here because I'm American. Um, 
which adds up to about 47 gallons per day, is filtered out of your blood into your capsule. And even the person who pees all the time does not pee 47 gallons per day, you would basically lose your blood volume in just a couple minutes this way. So collectively, all of the other capillaries in the body combined only filter out about one gallon per day. So these are so very effective because of this little pressure tweak, the high surface area and how porous they are. Um, so that is your GFR. So now what we're going to do in the next video is talk about the factors that impact GFR, both intrinsic or local factors and then extrinsic or systemic factors that impact GFR. So that'll be in the next video.